over this past weekend, Kai Sinat, Phantom Slice, aka Phantom, they were mm -hmm. giving away PS5s, they were giving away uh gift cards, they were giving away PCs, and they wanted to give back to the community. Um it went totally left. When I say left, it went totally, 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 totally left. Apparently, approximately 10,000 people showed up. They claim to have anticipated about 500, which I don't I don't know. How? How they, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I counted on their social medias. And although, like, I know some overlap happens, dog, they have, like, 14, 15, pretty much, like, you know, I'm about to jump 20 million subscribers slash followers across platforms. And this is, like, the most walkable city in the nation. Like, they don't even need to drive out. They just need to hop on a train or, like, go down the street. And, oh, Kai. Okay. Right. Most walkable place. Uh, it's also the summertime for kids up north still. So it's not like anybody had any obligations to be anywhere or anything like that. They were just out and about in the streets. Um, so I want to show this little snippet because I think this is like the best way we can show this without getting in trouble. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we'll still probably get in trouble. It, it doesn't really matter to be honest with you. Kaz going, Kaz blessed us. We can get claimed this stream. Mm. Mm. Uh, uh. I mean, this is making like big time news. This is making the CNNs of the world, the MSNBCs of the world. That's that's Phantom in the green hoodie right there. Um, you know, Duke was there, Agent was there, but this is the type of crowd that amassed. Um, now we definitely can't show some of the more violent things on here. Definitely can't show some of the more violent things on here, but. When I say they were jumping on cars, you know, destroying people's property. There was a hot dog cart vendor. He he got his property destroyed. Look at how many people are out there. Nah. What goes on from here on out, bro? You feel what I'm saying? Everybody, everybody for themselves. This is a war out there, man. This Crazy. Is the New York City Police Department. Yeah. There were a couple of fights. There were there were a bunch of people who were hurt, who were injured, uh, in the process. Um. You know, a bunch of people got trampled on, got stomped on, could not breathe. There was one girl that had a panic attack. Um, you know, there was there was a bunch of people who were just, you know, acting degenerate. Did you did you see the fight video? Oh uh, yeah, I I seen that. I seen the people getting sturdy on multiple cars. Um, I seen the girl crying on the ground and like Kai was trying to help her for real for real. Now, there's a lot of crazy clips from that evening, bro, or or that day. That shit was crazy. Now, I think one of the craziest parts about this is that apparently there was a police officer that got their neck cut, stabbed, something like that. Um, You know, in this process, got their gun taken away as well. Um, In this process as well. So it's, it's just crazy, but... You know, overall, what are you? What are your? What are your thoughts as to how things went down? Um, you know, about the whole situation. Really, what's your thoughts? For me, I mean, I'm still, I'm still a Kai fan. Like, I'm not gonna. This isn't cancel worthy for me, in my opinion. Like, he had good intentions. However, within that, we can have two sides of the token here, where, you know, you we don't have to cancel him and do all that shit, but also hold him accountable. To the mistakes that he made during this process. Um, I found out throughout this whole process that like you need a permit to even host an event that even has the potential to host that type of capacity. And I think like him, I don't know if it was him or his team or whatever. Someone over there fucked up and didn't really think this through. And it caused a whole lot of mess. In my opinion that didn't need to happen whatsoever. Um, which is unfortunate. Which is unfortunate because it, it could have been a really cool event. You know, it would have been lit. It would have been great content. But it ended up being a disaster class um, for everyone, to be honest with you. I don't think anyone, maybe aside from a couple people, really came out of that thing like, oh, this, this was a good day. This was, this was a good day. Um, 
So yeah, that's that's pretty much my thoughts on it so far. Um, I had a point that I I wanted to. Oh, I want to ask you this: out of the ten thousand people that came out, how many do you think were legitimately Kai fans that were out there to participate in the giveaway, or? And how many of them did you think just saw a bunch of shit going on in the streets and wanted to join up in the fun? Oh, I think I think that number is smaller. Uh, cause there was even one dude. Yeah, you know it's crazy. I think that might be like Sydney Sweeney's little brother. Did does she have a does she have a little brother? I don't know. But so there was one dude that was like, yo, I just went to CVS, um, and I was trying to get me some food or whatever. I was trying to get me something, and then. I saw that they had, you know, all this commotion going on. So then I hopped out to see what the commotion was about. I think that that's a small number. Now, to say fans, I can't say how many were specifically fans. I do think a large majority of those people were opportunists. Yeah, that's essentially what I'm getting at. I feel like a lot of the people I saw were not there to meet with Kai and participate in this giveaway and have a good time. They saw people getting rowdy in the streets and just wanted to participate and saw there was riots and a bunch of shit going on. So fuck it. This is essentially my green light to act like a jackass. And I'm just a part of this big ass crowd. I think the same thing happened during Astroworld, I feel like, throughout all, all of that shit going on. Um, maybe I'm not correct on that, but um, and just events like that where like there's mosh pits and shit like that and. You know, events like that. People just think, use these big ass events as an excuse to like go crazy, even though they really shouldn't. Now, and that's true. And then I, I think that some of the people that may have been there for the intended purposes switched to that side as well. Yeah. But I, I do still think that a good majority of them were there for Kai specifically or A and P to some extent, to some degree. Um, now, what they thought they were going to accomplish, I can't really say. Like that's that's what I that's what I think I'm confused by. But I did see one video where Kai actually gets to like the point of passing out um gift cards and stuff to people. Mm-hmm. Like he, he gets to the point where he can where he can um pass out the gift cards to people, people are accepting them, et cetera, et cetera. Um but the problem, the problem is it looks like he just clearly underestimates it because he's completely pressed in this circle. It's him, it's Punga, it's um, it, it's uh, uh, a security guard, it's Chris, and they're completely like backed into a corner, uh, trapped and everything like that. So what I'm what I and I'm saying that to say, like it looks like they had no understanding as to how great this this was going to be. And how uncontrollable a frenzied crowd would be. And I think a frenzied crowd, a hostile crowd, hostile people within a crowd just make it more hostile. There was there was like not even a thought process as to order as to how he was going to pass it out. Literally, I'm telling you, it, and I can pull up the video. It's him right here in the middle. It's mm-hmm. Chris on this side. It's his friend Pungo on this side. And they're just passing things out like. It's low key like a first come first serve. There's no there's no real like giveaway in that because I think a giveaway kind of alludes to there being a drawing or whatever the case may be. Mm. So from top to bottom, it's 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 chaotic and that leaves it open to whatever happens happens type situation. Yeah, I want to bring up a uh, taker's chat over here. He says he underestimated his his influence, and I completely agree because I think um. Even we when we were at DreamCon, we kind of had similar conversations um, of, like, I think as content creators, we lose sight of how big our actual audiences are because we get so lost in the game. And then we forget how big our audiences are until we actually see them in real life. Like, again, there's 1,100 of y'all watching this right now. First of all, shout out to y'all. But imagine seeing 1,100 people live. That's a shit ton of people. And when you get to a level of content creator as like an agent, as a Kai, as a Phantom, the numbers just, it's so, e- I'm just saying it's so easy to get la- uh, lost in like just seeing them as numbers. When in reality, yo, bro, you got 2 million people following you on, on, on Instagram. You got 3 million on Twitch. You got 5 million on YouTube. 
So when you put out a tweet that gets seen by 2 million people, and even 1% of that sees your shit, that's going to be 10,000 people, which is exactly what happened during that day. So, you know, it, it sounds corny, but I think there is a level um, that you get to in content creation where with great power does come great responsibility type shit. Like, y'all got y'all to gotta be prepared and understand, like, all, all this shit is new, all the fame is new, but at some point, bro, like, you got the funds to actually hire out a team and plan shit out. Like, there, there's the lack of resources is not an excuse for a lot of these big creators, in my opinion. But. Um, I mean, I'm seeing there's felony charges against five of the estimated, well, they're saying 5,000 people Friday. Uh, 30 adults, 31 juveniles have some sort of misdemeanor disorderly conduct charges um i can't i hate i hate honestly i hate the way that folks have been like caping for this whole concept of underestimated the influence we just came back from austin where there was thirty thousand people um if he asked on demand to get a dollar from his chat you can see how many people are going to give you a dollar um mm -hmm. if if I mean, he can't go to the mall. He can't go to Six Flags. He can't go to, you know, the grocery store. He can't go to a park. And I think at those points when you can't do normal stuff, you have to know for a fact um, that something is going, like, I, my life is different. And I think that this is another thing that people get mixed up. And, and I, I started having these questions or conversations on my spaces People on the outside may need to look at the content creators differently as well. It says 30 adults. I thought it was kids. I don't know who you think Kai Sinat. I know the running jokes on the internet. I know I know the little memes and all this stuff of the adults not liking him and et cetera, et cetera. There are so many people that watch Kai, consume the content, whether it be through clips, TikToks, Instagram reels or whatever. Yeah, he has adult fans. Yeah, yeah and, I, and adult adult may mean 18 in the legal system, but in reality, he has fans that are in their 20s, in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 50s. Yeah. He has adult I'm, fans. I'm going to tell you exactly how that looks. On this chart, is literally going to say, uh, A, 30% of your fans are below 18, 20 to 25% of your fans are 18 to 30, and then the rest is like 30 and above. Even that 25%, like I mentioned earlier, bro, when you got 5 million followers, what is 30% of that, bro? Like, I don't know, like 500,000, 600,000? I, I might be wrong on those numbers, but that's still a big amount of people that watch your content. You know what I'm saying? So, I just, I just can't, I literally <clears throat> can't understand. And people keep saying 50 isn't, I'm telling you, bro. I know you want to be naive about who these people are. And this this to me is a part of the parasocial conditioning to make you believe that this is still your your gangy, you know, still your friend, your homeboy that's watching the same double XL freestyles as you. Um, you know, the same uh uh I don't know, like these are these are the same people who watch the same content as you, Mr. Beast, YouTube, et cetera, et cetera. That's the social conditioning that you have to believe that these people are still normal. But in reality, these people are out of here. Like, they're they're out of here. They're on a different level. They have different problems. They have different money, all that stuff. I know because he still has the same chair and the same Blue Yeti mic and none of this stuff is professional. It makes you feel as if this is still this person on this level. But the the influence that he has, the rooms that he's in, the, the numbers in his bank account, this is somebody who is a legitimate celebrity. Like yeah. period point blank. I can't I can't I can't stress that enough. Nah, I, I agree. I agree. And I'm thinking about the whole like throwing him bail because he doesn't or he underestimated his in, his influence. I kinda get it because I, I'm pretty sure this is his first time trying to throw some like meetup like this. But also, I feel like Kai's been a content creator long enough to know of the other things that have happened to other creators who have fucked up, you know, setting up events. So you would hope in 2023, after all the shit that's happened, even as of recently, 
that we would learn from these mistakes, whether that be uh, DreamCon, TanaCon, uh, whatchamacallit, there was another one I was thinking of, um, but yeah, there's just been other events out there, um, Pretty Boy Fredo, I think, even like in the peak of COVID, threw that meetup in New York, um, and had like a thousand people there, so if, if Fredo can pull that, I, Kai, at, at this point in time, when people are outside for real, and I think peak Kai, Kai right now is bigger than Fredo ever was at his peak, like, I just don't know how, not even Kai specifically, but just someone in their team did not see that coming, bro. Like, I don't know. That's that's tough. Even even on this, even on this, because I I said this on my stream earlier. Somebody had to remind me. Even when they did the "I just want to rock" music video, like I know it's a little blurry, but we can see this is a lot of people. This is an insane amount of people right here. And that was on some like impromptu shit, right? That was on some I'm on the street pull up type pull shit. up type shit. So I, I type it out and then this is what occurs right here. Yeah, so to nah, think that nice. something with days worth of planning wouldn't produce more of an output. That come on, bro. That's just that's just naive on everybody's part. And if you don't have somebody in your camps, camps. Whether that be through AMP, your own management team, any of your other friends that you say you have that see something like this, if they can't say, "Yo, that's this is a bad idea," like, "Hey, this is a bad idea." If you you have your own management, if you if your management this is a bad this is a bad month. I mean, the bad year for his management team. Simple as that. Do you um? Do you feel like? Uh, uh, he should get these charges for inciting a riot. I think that's um, the thing that people are really sticking on. I mean, I don't know the law well enough to know exactly what qualifies, but I feel like if he qualifies under the criteria of the law, then I don't see why not, to be honest with you. So I'm leaning towards yes. Um, Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning towards yes. Do, do you feel like he... um? I don't want to say made those, but encouraged those people to get as rowdy as they got. Um, n not directly, not directly. Um, I don't think he showed up there and said, "Yo, I ain't gonna lie, we gonna we gonna act crazy, pull up." You know what I'm saying? Stomp, stomp the grounds and everything. I don't think it was like that, but I think it's kind of similar to the Astro World conversation we was having last year, where at Astro World, Travis Scott is not telling y'all to. Do these mosh? All right, all right, mosh right now. All right, let's you know, let's do the crazy shit right now. But I think through the brand that he's developed and the music that he's made, it's kind of like you show up to Astro World to, you know, mosh and honestly do drugs and all that shit. I'm not saying Kai encourages that, but it's kind of on the same lines of culture of like, you know, Kai is known as a, a as a lit content creator who gets lit so when he hosts an event he would assume yo it's gonna be lit so let's act on that type shit as opposed to i don't know marquez brownlee doing the same thing you know what i'm saying there's just two different brands so yeah i i will say i think i think your audience matters like the type of content you make matters um so that 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 range true into how people interpret um, you as a personality, you as a person, and what you're comfortable with. Um, and I also think that it is important to understand ultimately just just how famous and who you are. I I I, <laughs> I want to say that I didn't understand that they couldn't comprehend or he couldn't comprehend that this was the case. Uh, maybe this is it. Like, this is the thing that is it. This is another video from apparently the, the address where he stayed got leaked. Um, and these are kids mobbing to this B&B. &B. Mm. And you just have to, you just have to move smart. So when I see, I seen this video right here. But then I also saw on, and you can hear them talking about doing damage, like right here as well. Hold on, let me let me go back real quick. You can talk, you can hear them talk about inflicting damage. Hey, 
Are we breaking the window? Nah, you are. <laughs> Talking about breaking windows and fuck this car and blah, blah, blah. But if you can't, like, like this, this tells you, this stuff like this right here tells you exactly how big you are. Um, if if being in the rooms with Drake and Lil Baby don't tell you how big you are, stuff like this tells you how big you are. And I saw that video, and right after I saw that video, I also saw, um, what's it called? I also saw him post on his Instagram story, you know, him singing in New York, the, the Empire State of Mind song. He started singing that on the top of the roof, giving away his location. Mm -hmm. You just have to move. You just have to move smarter. I, I know I personally don't do things like that. And we're, and we're not nowhere near that type of level. But I don't even do that now. I, I don't when I vlog and stuff like that. I don't I don't show me leaving my house, which street I'm on and, and what the houses are like, because I know people look at I know people look for stuff like that. I just want to address this in the chat. He said we're sounding like haters. He said y'all would cheer if this was a white or Asian creator. That shit is nowhere near his fault. The conversation, and I, because I even saw the extreme of it in the chat. He was like, "Yeah, Kai is to blame for all of this." I think it's it's fine to like hold people accountable while also like still being fans of them. Like I'm I'm not gonna walk out of this conversation not like liking Kai anymore. I'm still gonna like Kai. I still fuck with his content. I still fuck with his movement. I don't think he's a bad person. I don't think he had bad intentions with what he did. I think it was a miscalculation. And that's it. That's it. Now, if it, I'm, I'm very big on repeated behavior. To put labels on people, I'm a big fan of, yo, you got to do that shit repeatedly. And if it becomes a repeated thing, then I'm going to put that label on you. But in terms of this conversation, like, yo, can we just, like, not talk about what he should be held accountable for. Like, I I don't think this is the craziest thing in the world. I think with, with everything, there is, like, a gray area. Things don't have to be so black and white. There's a lot of people to be blamed in this instance. Kai is one of them. But that also includes his management. That also includes the people who actually showed up and fucked up the whole day and actually did, you know, the rioting and all the damages and all the injuries and all that shit, they also need to be held accountable. Like, it's just, to me, like, even with the NBA conversations, it's it's like a just a pie chart to me. Like, no one is ever 100% of the blame as to why a team loses. Some of it's going to go to the coach. Some of it's going to go to the players. Out of those players, one specific player might have more to blame. You know what I'm saying? Some of it is just being outplayed by the other team. So... I think I think it would I think it would even be respon like irresponsible on our end to get up here and say, you know, hey Kai, there there's no blame on Kai. Kai's not at fault at all. Kai's not, you know, he did nothing wrong. He did everything right in this situation. That would that would be irresponsible on our behalf to say that or not talk about the the things that he could have done better in this situation. If we came up here and sat and said, Yo, this person who uh, uh, fought this person, that's wrong. Obviously, that person's wrong. This person who jumped on this person's car, hey, that's wrong. Ob obviously, that would be wrong. Like, we, we we understand that that's wrong. There's really nothing to even say to that in a conversation. We'll just be beating a stupid dead horse at that point. But to, to come on here and talk about, you know, what somebody could do better in the future what the thought process was going into this situation in general, I think that that's definitely more productive than saying, you know, Kai did nothing wrong. <laughs> he did nothing wrong. It, it's not his fault at all. And I yeah. and I was seeing that take online as well. Like, that's that's crazy that people would, if they if they had the opportunity, say, oh, Kai, you did nothing wrong. It's not your fault. It's those people's fault. That's that's the same enabling circle that he has around him now. Yeah. I would just like to see everyone's stance, because um, I, I don't know, I just see a lot of parallels between this situation and what happened to Astro World. because even back then we were having conversations of like, yo, is Travis to blame? Like, he shouldn't, he shouldn't be blamed for what his fans did, but then I, I just remember those conversations, it's like, okay, dude, we're not saying he's 100% of the blame, but like, 20, 15, 
Third, like he he deserves a part of the blame, bro. It, this is Travis Scott. This is Astro World. This is his festival. So like he has to hold some sort of accountability to this. No, now, how much is is the is the question? But to say no, to say zero, that's crazy. That's crazy. I heard. I heard they said Travis said um, when people were telling him that people were getting trampled and couldn't breathe and stuff like that. Um. He was saying that well, Drake hasn't performed yet, so we can't stop the show. No, jeez. And I <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> I only saw that from like two sources, but that that that's uh that's extremely crazy if that is the case. 